Jamie from Inky and Scrappy sharing with you today my craft roulette challenge number 182 project. I will fill you in on the project guidelines as we go through them here. Go check out Mary Gun Fun on YouTube at Craft Roulette. I'll have it linked below as well as the episode that this one goes with so you can find it. It's a fun improv card making challenge live Friday nights. I haven't been watching them live because football, so I catch them on the replay Saturday morning and make my card as I watch it. So I try to go quick. I try to not overthink it. And I'm going to tell you, I definitely checked out the parameters last night and thought about this one a little bit. Not that it mattered because I totally changed my mind on what I was planning to do by the time I sat down and started watching. So I had decided that I was going to use my circle cut in the front card bases here. So the project for this one was project with a circle or circles. And so I have these left over from my in-person card class last May. And so I try to use up some of the things that are on my desk or in need of, you know, my piles of things that have started and not finished. And so for me, this is just an easy way to kind of help use those things up. I have been enjoying the craft roulette challenge because I just pull stuff from my sash. I pull whatever in. I don't worry too much about brands or, you know, new stuff, old stuff, if it can still be found. I don't care. I'm just going to use and be creative. And I've been thoroughly enjoying Mary's chatter as well. So because this one is a blue base, because that's what I had done for the card for class, I'm just going to come in with some distress oxides and blending foams here to cover up that tealy blue color and make it into a night sky. So the color palette for this one was vegetable garden. So I have a vegetable garden or a weed patch, as I like to call it. And so, you know, I don't grow all the things anymore because I'm allergic to a lot of things. But so for this one, I brought in that deep purple as my eggplant color. If I could still have eggplant, I would grow it in my vegetable garden. I did bring in some blue here. I guess the bugs maybe or the night sky over the vegetable garden would work. I don't know. So I brought in some chip sapphire for my blue and then I brought in some black. So think of black dirt or the black dead vegetables that are left over in my vegetable drawer for my vegetable garden. I was really kind of thinking black dead vegetables, but black dirt sounds better. I did bring in some Brutus Monroe Aqua Pigments in Violet Frost. If you've been watching, you know why I have a bunch of violet frost in a little pan. Anyways, so I brought in some, I think this one is a slimline stitched hillside dye from Lawn Fawn. I just cut it from some green cardstock and then I'm just going to add some rustic wilderness to the top there to kind of give it a little bit more depth and dimension. And then for my die cut images, I didn't do coloring this time. I just haven't been in a coloring mood lately, probably because I have a few really heavy coloring involved cards on my plate to make. And so this one was just kind of fun to do die cutting again. So I'm bringing in Lawn Fawn's Shadow Box. It's their new one. A spooky Shadow Box add-on, I think which has the little haunted house in it, some little trees, the front gate, and there's a little moon in it, and some other things as well, a spider and a bat. So are all included in that little die set. So this is, you know, it, it just worked really well for this one. I am bringing in a little bit of Uhuhu bullet nib markers just to add some color, and then of course to add some definition on that die cut haunted house. So the element on this one was screen. Um, and this is where I, you know, thought of about 5,000 different things. But I ended up going with the fact that a door 
has a screen door. And so I ended up doing a double layer here. So you saw I did a vellum layer. And then, of course, I put the green layer on top. So the vellum layer was solely so I could have a vellum screen door. And so, you know, there's two doors. If I guess if you live in the Midwest, we tend to have two doors. I don't think any of my house doors do just because I don't leave my doors open at all because of my allergies. But my mother-in-law has, you know, like the farmhouse has, the farm, I should say, the, far, the house on the farm that we dairy farm on has a screen door as does the milk house has a screen door and so that was you know kind of where my mind went was the screen door anyways back to the rest of my card so I'm bringing in that front gate from that die set as well and then I did add in the spooky fence die border die from Lawn Fawn as well here to finish up that gated Fence. So I'm putting it in the foreground so it's going to be a lot bigger than the house, you know, depth wise. It looked good. So I'm adding in my spooky fence. I'm just, I cut it from the same piece that I cut all the other elements from and I just kind of glue it and go kind of like I did my hill there. It's kind of fun just to not measure anything beforehand and just kind of go. It's how I used to originally create. Before all, you know, all the special dyes and all the other stuff. So this one was just kind of fun to pull together. So as I piece this together and then I will continually cut off from my card front there. And then for my little, the rest of my little scene to kind of fill in that area, I'm just going to add the trees, the dead trees or the fall trees from that die set as well. And then, of course, letting them overhang that opening just a teeny tiny little bit to help, you know, set that scene. And then for the last element, which was random, was fuzz. Huh, fuzz. So immediately to me, fuzz was like flocked cardstock. And so I have flocking powder or fuzz, flocking fuzz, I, what, what is it even, is it flock, I don't know, it's called flock, so fuzz, uh, I don't know, so I have it in multiple colors, I pulled out the green, the brown, and the white, and I was thinking the white was going to be a little bit more see-through, I have a white one that has like glitter in it, and that was what I was going for, but I didn't grab that one, of course, so I ended up liking the brown one better, I tried to like the white one, you see me here trying to like the white one. And I was like, well, I need to color. I should have just gone right away and I cut another one out because I wanted three. Yeah, you see what I did there with the alcohol ink? Usually I will dye my white fun flock to the color that I want in a little jar with alcohol ink and it works fine. So I was thinking I could just dye it while it was on the die cut shape already. <sighs> Luckily... Oxides cover up most things. It looks a lot better in real life than it is, does on camera here. It did cover up fairly well with the oxide purple over the top. And then, of course, it just gave me a spot to put, you know, an added element. It, it's all good. So I'm coming in and just adding those little bats. So I'm going to bend their wings up. I just want to add glue to the center part or their body so their little wings kind of can flap around a little bit. They have a little bit of, you know, depth and dimension. Of course, my camera shut off because you're only allowed 30 minutes and then it shuts off. So I didn't catch it as soon as it cut off, but luckily I didn't miss out a whole lot. I ended up pulling up that black bat because I did not like it. Went and I cut another piece of cardstock into a bat shape. Of course, this little bat also comes with the house, the gate, and the trees. It's kind of a really great Halloween spooky house, I said. So I will add my third bat on top of that little oops spot, which covers it up fairly well. So then I'm going to bring in my sentiment stamp here. I ended up going with a hocus, the Hocus Pocus stamp set from Ink Road Stamps. 
And of course, it is a quote from the movie Hocus Pocus. Have you watched Hocus Pocus number two? I just watched it the other week. It's cute. I like Hocus Pocus. Let's focus. Okay, so I'm bringing in some pigment ink from Versa, Versa Fine Onyx Black Ink. It covers it inks well up over oxides, so it's going to sit on top of them fairly well. So it ends up being the only sentiment I do on my card. I liked it on the inside. I just I thought about putting something on the front, and I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Anyways, there is my completed card. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to go check out Craft Roulette. Mary Fun Gun is a lot of fun, hence why her, you know, name has fun in. Take care. Keep getting ink.